Hi you guys, what's up? I am here in Estacada, Oregon at the beautiful Milo MacGyver. I wanted to bring you guys along for a practice round so you guys can see what I'm throwing, see why I'm throwing it, and get to know my bag and my game a little bit better today. All right, I've got my Gold Line Ballista Pro here um, in 173. Even though it's a Ballista Pro, it is pretty flippy compared to some of the regular ballistas that I've thrown. We've got a little bit of headwind and the basket is pretty far to the right. So I'm hoping that I'm able to throw this guy out pretty flat and reliably have it turn over just a tiny little bit. And we'll see how it plays with the headwind. Okay, got some really, really good glide with that, but it did end up hysering out just about pin deep. So I think I actually wanna go with a regular gold line ballista. It's got a little bit more high speed turn, so it's a little bit more likely to kind of, just kind of roll with that Anheuser and glide into it. All right, that turned out really well and it was ended up to being a really good correction. That's kind of why I have those two in the bag is they're really, really similar in flight characteristics. So it makes it easy to make a choice of, do I want it to be understable or a little bit more stable? All right, guys, we have a pretty awesome elevation shot here, but it's not by any means wide open. So we're still gonna have to shape a pretty technical shot in order to get a look at the basket. And right now my OptoX Chameleon Ballista is just like performing such beautiful helix flights. So I'm hoping that with the elevation, I can get a really nice turnover and then she can be a good disc for me and stable up right at the end. And hopefully we'll land in this little sunny area that's down there. We've got a bit of a headwind, so the likelihood of this flipping too much is pretty high, but let's see if we can control the angle and, and, and manage it through the headwind. Yeah, I would say I'd say that was pretty close. Managed the headwind, didn't turn it over too much, and the disc came through for me at the end and hyzered right into a beautiful open area. And I'm I'm really liking that shot right now. All right, it was a little short. I'm gonna throw my recycled Gold Line Ballista Pro that is just like ultra seasoned. It has really, really good high speed turn, but it should fade out to get me in good position. A little flippy. Come on, Rhea. So for this shot, I want it to go really, really straight with a reliable fade at the end. And for me, my Biofusion Enforcer is, I call her my beefcake because it never flips in the headwind unless you do, do, do something silly about it. This is one of my most reliable high speeds over stable. Always comes back. Ah. Oh. Pretty true to the flight though. Super straight glide and always a reliable hyzer finish at the end. I like the Biofusion plastic just because it, it's a little pre-seasoned <laughs> almost. So I'm looking at a pretty straight shot um, and not a lot of variance left or right, but the distance is about 320. So I know that I, definitely want to get the glide. So right now I'm kind of a toss up between my Grace and then the Ballista Pro I threw again. Oh my gosh. Y'all, y'all, that would have been cool. So I think the Grace is what would, would be the winner there. Um. <laughs> All 
right, so we have 300 on the dot, I am told, and we've got a little bit of a ceiling, so I'm actually gonna break out my Lucid Vandal. This is my go-to understable, like utility fairway. It ha for me, it fits my arm speed perfectly. I've tried like the Stag and the Fury and a lot of other Trilogy fairways that don't match my arm speed as well. And this one is perfect. It usually turns over if I throw it flat and has a beautiful turnover. So that's kind of what I'm gonna attempt here. But because it's a fairway, I don't have to throw it quite as hard. So I'm thinking I'm gonna be able to navigate the low ceiling a lot better with this. Again, we are just like hunting the baskets right now. If I, ah, that one probably went like, like what, four inches to the right of the basket and then hyzered in. So I think the assessment was, was fairly on point. Ooh, I like that. And we'll break out a new disc here. Another underrated disc, the Long Bowman. I have it in the tournament and the VIP, a uh, little bit more understable, a little bit more stability on the hyzer. And then I even have a couple more in the bag, outside the bag, that I'll swap in and out should I need it that are more stable. But I, this is really nice for my forehand. It's very easy to throw. It has great glide, but it has enough fade at the end to where I don't have to worry about pushing too hard on it. And I can just kind of naturally throw my forehand stroke. There's some potential there. There's some potential there. The disc that immediately comes to mind is my Felon. Exceptional glide for being a stable to overstable fairway driver. It goes really, really far and it always has a really reliable hyzer at the end. So I'm hoping to just hit the gap flat and then let the disc do what it does. I think, yeah. So we got the distance, even though I released it a little bit nose up and errant, the glide still carried me really, really well and we'll have a chance to look at the basket. I'm looking at maybe 150, 175. We've got a pretty low ceiling and I want it to hyzer pretty well. So for me with distance control, it's kind of a toss up between my Bard and my Felon. Bar the Felon is gonna have more glide, but I feel like it's gonna skip in towards the basket but the bard i feel like is going to have more distance control so maybe i'll throw both here and we'll see which one ends up being better a mm, little bit of a misrelease and it came out early and on a hyzer so definitely not ideal let's see if perhaps we can execute this throw better and maybe get a better result as I feared, it had that extra glide, but it looks like it pushed the basket. So I feel like in a tournament situation, the, the fairway driver would be a better option. So this is a really unique shot where you want to get some forward progress, but then have the disc break later on into an Anheuser later on in the flight. And I have a couple of discs that I know I can work with here, but a new one, that I just threw into the bag um, is an Opto Fuse. Super incredible understable disc. I, I like it when I wanna throw my deputy, but I want more glide because it has similar stability and similar ease of throw, but usually a little bit more glide. I'm worried that it's gonna cut too soon into the woods, but there's only one way to find out. So this is, um, Westside calls it a fairway mid-range. It has exceptional glide, but still has the ease of throw of a mid-range. That's why I love the Warship, is it fits perfectly in between like a mid-range and a fairway. So you get control and distance, it's like the best of both worlds. One of my, one of my favorite all-time discs. My Zero Hard Mace. This is like a super duper underrated disc. Um, it's not my favorite in premium plastic. The, the, the rigidity of the Zero Heart is perfect and it is such a straight flying, like neutral to understable mid-range. I don't think I would ever take this out of my bag at all. What I usually throw for my dead straight saber, like mid-ranges is my gatekeeper. I love it because off the tee, I can give it kind of full power essentially, but it gives me the distance control that I need if I just don't want any left to right.
I've got classic warden as my main putter and then I've got a prime burst as my like throw and approach putter. I love my classic wardens for long putts. They have exceptional glide with like a reliable hyzer at the end. And funny enough, uh, when I hit the road to uh, head out on tour, got about three hours deep into the drive and I realized that my main first run white classic warden was not in my bag. Luckily, I just brought a lot of duplicates, so this is gonna be the main, main warden in the bag and I have no idea where it went, like at all. So fun insight when you see me throw in the, the red putter. So I really love these like, like 100 to 120. I love just like a solid, like little standstill run at the basket. And I've gotten kind of good at them. Kind of good at them. <laughs> so I've got a cheeky little upshot here. We've got a, maybe a four by four foot gap that I need to hit and I just need it to go straight with a little bit of finish. And the perfect recipe for that is a nice moonshine harp, Ricky Wysocki. My trusty thunder chunk, she's really beat in, so it's got really good flight harp, harp flight characteristics, but I, I have beaten it to a point where it just has like extra glide. It's like a longer L instead of like a 90 degree angle. Ha! Got a little left to right shot here about maybe 120 and I love Anheuser shots with my absolutely seasoned deputy. Um, all right guys, so that was a fun little practice round slash in the bag with me to kind of see what I'm gonna be using to tackle the Beaver State Fling and the rest of the tournaments that I have this season. Thank you so much for following and joining along. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at Ananda if you'd like to. Uh, there is a link to some of my fundraiser discs in the bio there if you do happen to stop by. And um, yeah, thank you so much for coming by and look forward to next time.